Some movie stars like guaranteed golf time, others insist on top billing, and a select few demand very special underwear. Here are some of the more specific, occasionally weird, movie star contract writers floating around out there. After winning a Best Actor Oscar for his role as Ray Charles in Ray, Jamie Foxx was catapulted to a level of fame he'd never experienced. Foxx had previously made a name for himself as a singer, comedian, and all-around charismatic fellow. Foxx had signed on to star in Michael Mann's Miami Vice before winning his Academy Award. So when production began, he demanded a pay raise so that he would make more money than his co-star, Colin Farrell. Both Mann and Farrell had reputations for being difficult to work with, Mann for his aggressive directing style and Farrell for his long-term addiction issues. But it was Fox whose demands caused the most issues during production on Miami Vice. Fox's strangest contract stipulation was the refusal to film any scene on a boat or a plane. A crew member told Slate, Jamie is more of a diva in the sense that he was afraid of boats, afraid of planes. There were a lot of things where he was afraid for himself. It's understandable that Fox wanted to feel safe, but he he signed on to a film about drug trafficking in Miami, where planes and boats feel pretty necessary, and the movie was his idea in the first place. If you've ever wondered who would win in a three-way fight between Fast and Furious stars Vin Diesel, Dwayne Johnson, and Jason Statham, you'll probably never know for sure. For most of the Fast and Furious films in which they've worked together, all three signed contracts with something called an equal pain clause attached. It started when Diesel didn't want to look like he was taking more damage in a fight between his and Statham's characters. But after trying and failing to keep count of every blow, Diesel and his co-stars devised the equal pain clause, which basically says that none of the three can and leave a fight looking like they've lost. This is why no fights between Dom, Hobbs, and or Shaw end with a victory based on physical strength. Their bouts are always interrupted before someone needs to win or lose. Thing about street fights? The street always wins. While it may seem vain, it makes sense that stars who have built their careers around playing near-invincible characters in popular action films would be concerned about looking weak on screen. Jack Nicholson's portrayal of the Joker in Tim Burton's 1989 film Batman is still considered one of the best to ever hit the screen, and Nicholson made sure his contract anticipated his legendary performance. You look fine. I didn't ask. Aside from accepting an initial pay cut in exchange for a percentage of the film's earnings and merchandising, which ended up making Nicholson a very, very wealthy man, his contract had a few other peculiarities. Nicholson's contract guaranteed that he'd be given time off from filming whenever the LA Lakers played a home game. And when Batman filming moved to the UK, Nicholson demanded that every Lakers game be taped and delivered to him as soon as possible. William Frawley, who played Fred Mertz on I Love Lucy, also had a clause in his contract that allowed him to be absent from production whenever the New York Yankees were in the World Series. Who's Joe Maggio? Joe DiMaggio, and he's one of the greatest Yankees of all time. The Yankees were a dominant team in the 50s, making it to the World Series every year, except one during the show's run from 1951 to 1957, which means Frawley got a nice little two-week break almost yearly to watch his beloved team. Comedian Eddie Murphy starred on Saturday Night Live from 1980 to 1984, and he used a sketch show to launch his career in stand-up and, more importantly, films. In fact, thanks to movies like Beverly Hills Cop and Trading Places, there was a time when Murphy could have easily been named as one of the most famous people on the planet. Whenever Murphy is filming a movie, he reportedly demands that his trailer be filled with brand new items. He requires fresh underwear and socks with the tag still on, and unused toiletries including a brand new toothbrush and tube of toothpaste. You got a refrigerator in your office? Man, J. Edgar Hoover didn't even have refrigerator in his office. Just maybe some hair curlers in a dryer or something. At the end of the day, Murphy disposes of everything he's used and expects pristine replacements the next morning. It's doubtful that he'd accept a six-pack of Fruit of the Loom Tighty Whiteys or a generic brand 99 cents toothbrush. So not only is he contributing to landfills with this strange policy, but he's also costing studios a few extra bucks every day. Character actors are often the performers most beloved and respected by industry colleagues and cinephiles. Danny Trejo, for example, has been acting since 1983. While younger movie fans may know him as Carmen and Junie's tech-savvy uncle Isidore from Spy Kids, Trejo has spent most of his career working with directors like Quentin Tarantino and Michael Mann on violent action films. Are you a Mexican or a Mexican? I'm a Mexican. 
It was long rumored that Treyo had a clause in his contract demanding that whenever he played a movie villain, his character had to die before the end. Treyo confirmed this on X in 2017, saying that he made sure his bad guy characters died so kids would learn that crime doesn't pay. Tom Cruise is famous for performing most of his own stunts, which have gotten increasingly dangerous over time. In fact, Cruise has nearly been killed multiple times while attempting dangerous stunts, and believe it or not, it might have had something to do with his underwear. Okay, maybe not, but Cruise is very particular about what he wears under his clothes whenever he's performing a stunt. According to one report, he requires that the wardrobe department store around 50 custom-made G-strings made of stretchy, soft material. A source told the Daily Star that Cruise prefers this underwear for stunts because of its, quote, comfort and flexibility. I feel the need, the need for speed. In addition to the underwear clause, Cruz also stipulates in his contracts that his likeness can't be used in the production of action figures. This is why customers will rarely see an Ethan Hunt collectible for sale, at least not an officially licensed one. It's not just the stars of today's Hollywood who make very particular contract demands. At the time that Paul Newman and Steve McQueen were both cast in the towering Inferno, their reputations were pretty different. It's out of control. It's coming your way. McQueen was a popular, well-known star, but Paul Newman was already a living legend, thanks to his many award-winning performances. Both men were car guys and action stars, but only Newman was known as a dramatic actor. For his part, McQueen was obsessed with status, specifically his status in relation to stars like Newman. At one point during production, McQueen added up the dialogue in the towering Inferno screenplay and demanded extra lines so that he and Newman would have an equal number. Newman called the move, quote, chicken but McQueen's biggest contract demand was top billing on the film's poster. This was a considerable problem for the studio, because Newman also expected top billing. And in a world where McQueen didn't complain about it, Newman would have had it by default. But the studio gave both stars top billing through the power of graphic design. McQueen's name came first on the poster when reading left to right, but Newman's name was printed higher than McQueen's. If you looked at the poster from top to bottom, it was Newman who had top billing. I'm not going to say a thing until I talk to my lawyer. Even though she has a reputation for being down-to-earth, Julia Roberts has one of the most wasteful contract clauses on the list. Whether she's working in Hollywood or on location on the other side of the globe, Roberts must have four or more gallons of bottled Evian water daily when she's on set. By the way, we had that water brought in special for you folks. It came from Well and Hinkley. The Evian clause is found in all of her contracts, and if the production team fails to produce the water, the studio gets slapped with a six-figure fine. The thing is, Roberts doesn't actually drink the water. She washes her hair with it. Some might consider that wasteful, perhaps even Roberts herself, who has a reputation for being eco-conscious. But everyone has their priorities. George Clooney is one of the world's biggest movie stars, in large part due to his impressive filmography. One of Clooney's most successful projects was Alfonso Cuarón's Gravity, a film about two astronauts, played by Clooney and Sandra Bullock, attempting to find a way back to Earth after their shuttle is hit with debris. And in his contract for the film, Clooney made some bold demands. He asked for a beach hut to be built right next to his trailer so he could kick back between scenes. And on top of that, he made the studio build him a basketball court. Will Smith, another of Hollywood's biggest stars, made similar demands during the filming of Men in Black 3. Smith didn't ask for a beach hut, but he did demand an entire RV dedicated to his workout equipment and a two-story motor coach that was bigger and fancier than most of the nearby apartments. If you were half the man I am, the hell are you talking about. I am half the man that you are. At one point, production actually had to move the trailer because residents of the Manhattan neighborhood complained that it was blocking their view. Fans of Reese Witherspoon are eagerly awaiting news of Legally Blonde 3, which is rumored to be in pre-production. The character of Elle Woods became a style icon thanks to the first movie, rocking everything from a color-coordinated teal and turquoise outfit to a powder pink satin one-piece with rabbit ears like a Playboy bunny. You're not smart enough, sweetie. Wait, am I on glue, or did we not get into the same law school, Warner? It's no surprise, then, that when it came to Legally Blonde 2, Witherspoon had it in her contract that she'd be allowed to keep Elle's entire wardrobe after production wrapped. To this day, Witherspoon's closet is filled with pieces from the film, and she once confessed to late-night host Graham Norton that she went home with all of Elle Woods' shoes. How many pairs of Jimmy shoes? Like 77. <laughs> Similarly, when Rue McClanahan signed on to play Blanche Devereaux in Golden Girls, she had it in her contract that her character's wardrobe needed to be custom-made and that she would be allowed to keep all of it. At 
just need some cucumbers to put on my eyes. You'll have trouble seeing, Blanche. <laughs> when McClanahan passed away in 2010, her son made sure that many of her Golden Girls keepsakes, including wardrobe pieces, were put up for auction as she had requested, so that her fans could own a piece of their favorite show. Roger Moore was a cigar enthusiast long before he signed on to be the third official James Bond. Moore starred in seven consecutive Bond films, more than any other actor to date, and he was the first to introduce cigars as a part of Bond's on-screen image. Moore's contract stipulated that he be given an endless supply of Monte Cristo cigars whenever he was filming a Bond movie, which was an outrageous contract rider at the time. It would probably be outrageous today, too, given that a box of 20 Monte Cristos now goes for around $280. Of course, Moore's proclivity for Monte Cristo cigars also meant that Bond had a proclivity for Monte Cristo cigars, and Moore can be seen smoking them in all seven of his Bond films. Interestingly, James Bond never smokes a cigar in any of the original Ian Fleming books. In fact, Fleming associated the smell of cigars with bad guys and cheap settings. Moore cared less about canonical accuracy, though, than he did about his bottomless humidor stocked with Monte Cristo Especial No. 1 cigars, both on and off-screen. Samuel L. Jackson is no stranger to a contract writer, and given that his movies have collectively made more money than any other American actor to date, he has a lot of leverage when it comes to negotiations. For example, Jackson refuses to do a second take if he thinks they nailed the scene on the first try. But this isn't the only hard and fast clause in his deals. During filming, the studio is required to pay for and facilitate a break from the set to play golf at least twice a week, whether or not he's on the call sheet. When I'm not working, I play every day. Yeah, I'm up it. 5.30, 6 o'clock, I'm at the golf course by 6.30. Jackson makes time to relax and recharge even on his most stressful projects, and it speaks to his star power that he's able to make the studio pay for it. Jackson loves golf and has participated in the annual Ryder Cup Celebrity All-Star Match, so we suppose it makes sense that he'd want to get in some consistent practice no matter which superhero he's embodying at the moment. 